So we posted the reel, was it two days ago, after the Trey Lance trade to the Dallas Cowboys, and then everybody was just like, oh, what, like, what are the Cowboys doing? Like, traded for Trey Lance, we have a starting quarterback, you have four quarterbacks on your roster, the Cowboys decided they wanted to release Will Greer as a, as a, as a final 53 roster cut. So now you sitting with Trey Lance and now everybody's sitting there all concerned about Dak Prescott's job, which, hey, I love every bit of it, to be honest with you. Because like I told you, I am the driver of of the Dak Prescott is not the guy bus. Been saying that since he first entered the league, like after the rookie season, got got um, rookie of the year, took the Dallas Cowboys to the playoffs. And I was like, yeah, mm, I'm not really seeing it. And then two back to back years. Uh, last year versus Dak, uh, excuse me, Brock Purdy lost that game in the playoffs. The year before that, lost that game to the 49ers again. Didn't throw for over 100 yards in the first half. Where I'm just like continuously keep saying, even before that, when he got the contract extension, I was like, man, I don't know if he should be paid like a top top 10 quarterback in the league because I strongly don't believe he's a top 10 quarterback in the league. Also, by the way, top 10. Um, quarterback list coming out sometime within the next week or so but um yes anyway the the trey land situation situation let's go ahead and get into that because i feel like it didn't do and i didn't do enough justice when i dropped the reel the other day where we're talking about trey lands 2019 in north dakota had an undefeated record 16 and 0 had 2786 yards 28 touchdowns through no picks in 2019 and then due to covid he don't he'd only played like one game. And then prior to that, this his high school his high school years only played one season as a starter. So the inexperience is definitely there for a Trey Lance. And and I wanna I wanna make sure that I that I explain this perfectly because I'm always in the corner of these of, of players that don't have opportunities where they can where they have opportunities have opportunities to showcase what they can actually a fair opportunity to showcase what they can actually do so four and four as a starter with the san francisco 49ers right 40 uh, 48.4 yard passing yards excuse me 48.4 passer rating 194 pass yards didn't throw no no touchdowns at the 55 uh qbr right so his tenure with the san francisco 49ers like we had injuries at the injuries at the injuries at the injuries like 2021 had the hand the hand finger fracture had the knee strain had a a pedal ankle fracture had an, a pedal ankle dislocation like this is 2021 and 2022 back-to-back seasons and then i will probably say the writing on the wall for trey lance as far as him not being the guy for san francisco was probably when they decided to bring back Jimmy Garoppolo last year, where they made him like the highest paid backup, where they guaranteed like six six point five million dollars. And if depending on plan time, I believe was something with the incentives where you can go go up to like close to like sixteen million dollars, where Jimmy Garoppolo could possibly get paid. Where they prior to that, they basically was like, okay, you have the opportunity to seek a trade, and then they was like basically reject retracted that was like look we're gonna go ahead and pay you and then we go we go give this make this bug a, a whole bunch of city base basically so here's where i was at here where i'm at with the with the whole trey land situation because last year nobody was expecting brock purdy to come in and have the success that he had but unfortunately trey lance ended up getting hurt where he based trey lance had his opportunity but Lost your job due to injury, which is never, which is, which is unfortunate and is never fair. It's never fair to have. But when you, like, Brock Purdy came in, he did a, a pretty decent job. Took the, took the San Francisco 49ers to the playoffs. And we go into the 2023 offseason. You have the, the John Lynch comments as far as Brock, Brock Purdy is basically the lead guy going into training camp 2023 as far as being the starter. And then, they go ahead and bring in Sam Darnold. You're hearing about Sam Darnold coming in. He's 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 turning some heads where it's a two it's a two man it's a two man battle and we're like, okay, where's Trey Lance at? Right? So I'm looking at the first preseason game. And I'm just sitting there like, hmm, this don't look this don't look very good. Like doesn't really doesn't really like 
isn't really good at just like one thing. I'm just sitting there. I'm. I, but what, what really was mind blowing to me was when he scrambled. Was when he scrambled and then he ended up getting sacked in the backfield to a defensive lineman catching him from behind. So I was like, okay, speed ain't really there. Not very, not very elite as far as speed. And then we came back out in the second preseason game, in 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 in, in the two minute drill, he threw a seam route touchdown, which is pretty impressive. But it was against a whole bunch of backups. So uh, it, it he showed he had promise. Now. Unfortunately, he's not on the same level as a Brock Purdy and, and a Sam Darnold right now. But if we're being honest, this, this is like one of those situations where you look at back when the Los Angeles Rams had the situation with, with Jared Goff and Sean McVay. We're not on the same page. By the way, check out the, the Play Callers uh, the Play Callers podcast. It's a very good podcast that you definitely should check it out. Like when you look at the Los Angeles Rams, they were in a situation where they are basically a quarterback away from them being a legitimate Super Bowl contender winner. And I felt like that Super Bowl against the New England Patriots, it was like, all right, the quarterback basically held us back. We could not, we, we have to limit what we could possibly give the quarterback for us to succeed. And I feel like when you're, when you have a timetable like that, where you have a legitimate Super Bowl contender team, and it's just that one player that's holding you back, you can't slow up the train for this one player. And I feel like this is a particular situation with the Trey Lance where the 49ers were in a situation with Jimmy Garoppolo where they were consistently being competitive and he was just not where they needed him to be at and they had to go ahead and move on. Now, here's where things get a little bit questionable for me because of the fact that nobody like nobody wanted to trade for him, obviously, because of the fact that we already we like we know Brock Purdy. He's already the guaranteed starter. So basically, teams have, again have all the leverage that we don't have to give up a first round pick for this guy. We don't have to give up a second round pick for this guy. Maybe a third, maybe a fourth, but we don't have to give up th- that much for this guy. And I'm just what 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 what, what was obvious to me was like D'Amico Ryan's former defensive coordinator for the 49ers. He took a flyer on, well, he went ahead, went in the first round and ended up getting CJ Stroud. That where he did was like, okay, cool. They, he must see something that he does not like in, in Trey Lance. And then I'm over here thinking of some possible solutions, well, excuse me, landing spots for Trey Lance where he can get an opportunity for him to, you know, get some experience under his belt as far as throwing the football. Obviously, the Minnesota Vikings, they came up. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, they came up. The Washington Commanders came up. And then, of course, the Miami Dolphins came up, especially due to the fact that Mike Daniel, ex-offensive coordinator for the, the San Francisco 49ers, has a, rela- has a relationship with Trey Lance. I feel like with Tua and his concussion issues, he's basically one hit away from being obsolete. So I felt like that was definitely going to be a perfect situation. But again, going back to the Texans, D'Amico Ryan's getting to CJ Stroud. Eh, that was a little bit questionable. Now let's go ahead and take this to the San, to the to the Dallas Cowboys aspect of things. Because everybody thinks it's just it's such a big a bad thing. So the Dallas Cowboys, they traded a fourth round pick for Trey Lance. This is like a low ceiling, high reward type of deal, which reminds me of the Miami Dolphins back in 2019. Where they ended up, excuse me, yeah, 2019, when the Dolphins ended up making that trade for for Josh Rosen for a low risk, high reward type of pick, where you got a first round draft pick, a first round caliber talent player, where you can develop him, and he could possibly end up being more than what the draft pick that you end up giving up. Like who who cares about a fourth round pick? Like, let's be real. Like, what what are the Dallas Cowboys going to do with a fourth round pick going into 2024, 2024 draft? Like, what are they going to do with it? Like, it's probably going to be wasted on some type of body special teams player anyway. So go ahead and roll the dice on the Trey Lance where you could possibly get the reward. Now, here's where things, this conspiracy thing comes in for me, whereas I enjoy this so much, is the fact that you put him in Dallas with Dak Prescott. Which, again, like I told you, I'm not a Dak Prescott guy. So durability has been an issue for Dak Prescott for for the past couple of seasons. So let's say, let's play devil's advocate where Trey Lance could actually come in there, 
due to injury. I don't wish injury on anybody, but to come in there due to injury and then end up not being half bad for the Dallas Cowboys and then somehow end up taking taking Dak Prescott's job where he would end up having to find a job elsewhere. Hey, call it poetic po- po- justice because at the end of the day, isn't that what you did with Tony Romo in, at the end of his career? And due to injury, back injuries, you end up coming in and you end up, you know, balling. So, hey, you can't be mad at the Dallas Dallas Cowboys for bringing in extra competition for Dak Prescott because he hasn't just he hasn't been getting it done in my honest opinion. But you look at the salary this year, the Cowboys are only going to have to pay nine hundred and forty thousand dollars to to trade Lance, and then two thousand twenty four, you pay five point three million. You pay nowadays, you paying what maybe almost ten million dollars for a backup quarterback these days. So I feel like they got they got to trade Lance on pennies on the dollar. So. I, I feel like I feel like I'm well, number one. I'm enjoying this so much. I'm enjoying this so much because of the fact it's the Dallas Cowboys. Even even better if it was the Miami Dolphins, and then we, Tua could be looking over his shoulder. But you know, we all can't get what we want. We all can't get what we want. But yeah, it's a low risk, high reward type of situation. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to what they decide they're gonna what the Dallas Cowboys are gonna look like moving forward.